When you look at history, you realize that the dinosaurs did not have a space program. And that's why there are no dinosaurs in this room right now. Where are the dinosaurs? They got wiped out because a rock about six miles across plowed into the Yucatan of Mexico about 66 million years ago. Can that happen again? Not that it can happen, it will happen again. We have rocks that are perhaps the size of an apartment building that hit the earth once every 100 years. In the last 100 years, we had two of them hit Russia, for example. And on a scale of thousands of years, you can have an object that can wipe out England or Germany, a nation buster. And on a scale of tens of millions of years, a life-threatening asteroid as well. What this means is that we need an insurance policy. We have to go into outer space with the idea that we could be creating a new home out there because life is so precious that you just can't put it in one place and assume that it's going to be there forever. We once thought that the outer planets are barren, useless, uninteresting, boring. Now we realize we made a huge mistake. Three and a half to four billion years ago, Mars was a lush planet. Their riverbeds, their lake beds, ocean beds on Mars, showing that once upon a time, Mars had plenty of water. But unfortunately, most of the water went underground, into outer space, or some of it is still there in the form of ice. If we can melt the ice, then liquid water could flow freely once again on the surface of Mars, and that would be the critical point for terraforming the red planet. Once we establish a colony on Mars, then we have to look at the next target, which could be Europa and Titan, moons of Jupiter and moons of Saturn. When you look at Europa, which is a moon of Jupiter, you realize that underneath the ice cover, there's a liquid ocean of water. In fact, there's more water in liquid form on Europa than on the planet Earth. That's amazing. Believe it or not, NASA had a plan on the books to put a submarine so that it would then look for signs of life in the oceans of Europa. When we look at extrasolar planets, planets beyond our solar system, we ask ourselves, which planets are Earth-like? Why? Because that's where we got started. But now we realize that Jupiters are much more common than Earth's in outer space. And Jupiters have moons going around them. And these moons, like Europa, may have liquid oceans. In other words, life in outer space may be aquatic. One problem, talking about alien life, is that we've been brainwashed by Hollywood into thinking that intelligent life looks like us. But why? Why not have a life form totally different than the life forms that we're familiar with? And that is perhaps a distinct possibility. You see, on the planet Earth, we have three ingredients that helped us to become intelligent. One is a posable thumb to grab things. You need language to communicate. And third, you need eyesight, stereo eyesight. So now think about it for a moment. On the planet Earth, how many animals have all three? 
And he began to realize we're the only ones. Therefore, let your imagination run wild. Think of hostile environments. Think of bizarre environments where life could form, where you have these three ingredients, but in a different order, in a different arrangement. And then you begin to realize that all sorts of life forms can become intelligent throughout the galaxy. What about the exploring of stars far beyond our solar system? Well, so far, we've been able to identify about 5,000 extrasolar planets orbiting other stars in our own backyard, the Milky Way galaxy. But the nearest one, the nearest one is about four light years away. How are we possibly gonna send something that far away? So an antimatter rocket would be perhaps the most efficient way to create a starship to go to the nearest star. You're not talking about zapping yourself instantly to the stars. You're talking about a 20 year journey perhaps to the nearby stars. Another possibility is ramjet fusion engines. Well, interstellar space has free hydrogen. So why not have a scoop that scoops up free hydrogen and burns it in the fusion reactor, that too can go close to the speed of light. And the advantage is you don't have to bring much fuel because the hydrogen is for free. Lastly, people say, what about warp drive? What about exceeding the light barrier? The late Stephen Hawking actually did the mathematics and found that yes, if you could punch a hole in space and time to create a wormhole, it may be possible to build a starship. Of course, the energy necessary to bend space and time on that scale is that of a star. You would have to be a very advanced civilization to do it, but is it possible? And the answer is, well, potentially, yes. When you look at a human and you look at a robot, you begin to realize that the humans have tremendous advantages over a robot, but every year, robots become more powerful, more intelligent. They'll be as smart as a rat. They'll be as smart as a rabbit. They'll be as smart as a dog or a cat. And eventually, they will be as smart as a monkey. At that point, they are potentially dangerous. Because at that point, they will have strength and self-awareness. We know we're humans, but robots do not know they are robots. And as a consequence, they are potentially dangerous if they become increasingly intelligent. So at that point, what do we do? We put a chip in their brain to shut them off if they have murderous thoughts. But what happens in the far future when they're smart enough to remove that chip then we have to seriously think about merging with them. We're not talking about having electrodes come out of your head. No, we're not talking about science fiction. We're talking about being superhuman, super beautiful, super strong, and super intelligent. This has been the trajectory of humanity. We've been modifying ourselves ever since we could. And what about modifying ourselves so that we can live on other planets? So that we can explore the universe? That is a possibility. That would allow us to live on other worlds, to thrive even if Earth was endangered. So there's a possibility that enhancement, that is merging with robotics, could give us the key to living throughout the galaxy.